God is intentional about you. It does not matter what you are feeling because of the situation around you. He makes all things beautiful in his time and season. Don't let that situation that looks like it is hopeless make you worry. God has gone before you to make every good path straight. Everything that you need, all that you will ever need, he will supply. Don't panic. Don't be anxious because God has gone ahead of you. He knows it all and he sees it all. The Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. God wants you to know in this moment he has seen your pain. He knows you are overwhelmed and exhausted and worried about how everything will turn out. But be at rest. He is already ahead of you, working it out. And he said, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. These words begin a familiar passage in Ecclesiastes, which teaches that there is a time for all important parts of our lives, work and play, morning and joy, active and calm, willing and resting. Know that these rhythms are important and know that God is behind every voice of our lives. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your voice, acknowledge Him and He will make strength your path. Our own goodness and wisdom cannot bring us to salvation. Only the sacrifice of Jesus Christ can restore our broken relationship with God. By remembering this each day, we can joyfully walk down God's path for us and be content with His will. But I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. The kingdom of heaven is like a desert buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great peace, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. When you finally find your life purpose, your mission, or your own dream, take a chance and take a leap in faith. You may or may not make it immediately, but you will definitely make it. The joy and fulfillment are also in the pursuit. Everything else is just icing on the cake. Jump into your purpose. Stop judging that you may not be judged, for as you judge, so will you be judged. The measure with which you measure will be measured out to you. If you measure other success based on their finances, chances are that's also how you measure your own success. If you measure their success based on their job titles, chances are that's also how you measure your own success. Do you need to change the measure you use? Jesus said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that God's. And 
they marveled at him the Pharisees here comfort Jesus about paying taxes but Jesus turned the question into a matter of devotion he points out through his answer that we have the image and inspiration of God marked on our hearts. We were originally created in the image of God since we are created in his image. We should acknowledge him as our creator and remember that we cannot live a fulfilling life apart from him. Rejoice always, be without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. This passage of short commencement is of great importance. We should live our lives with the spirit of worship, constantly attuned to the will of God in prayer, and always turning back to Him with gratitude for the way he has blessed us this help us keep our eyes on him as we live out our lives god is touched by our humility second chronicles 7 verse 14 says that if we will humble ourselves before god confessing and forsaking our sins he will hear our prayer and forgiving our sin. Without this humility, we would still be in our sins. I am thinking about of a dear friend right now who, as far as I know, died without the Lord as his Savior because he refused to all Christ to forgive his sins. My friend said that he should be able to save himself with his own good works. He should not allow anyone or anything take responsibility of his deeds. Before you think of my friend as a wicked heathen who thumped his nose at God, I have to tell you he was one of the sweetest kindest man I have ever met. He really had done many marvelous things in his life. He had been loving and beloved of those around him. He was gently loved and respected by the community where lived. Yet my friend was too proud to allow the Lord Jesus to forgive him of his sins. My friend was very much like many other people who feel they can earn their way to God and do not need to humble themselves for God's forgiveness.